I know what it's like to feel like you have to fight for your position Mm -hmm. and to always feel like you're trying to prove yourself or am I good enough? And, and, And your dreams are right there. And it broke me down because I, I, you know, from the very beginning of my career, I've had performances where I've fought, 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 fought and had people boo me or, you know, talk down to me or talk shit to me because I was a girl or, you know, I've, I've, it's been crazy. So I just, it just, it broke my heart, you know, it broke my heart. Very nice. Well, Priyanka and Fifi, welcome. Oh, Are we here as a star? Oh my Fifi. God, welcome. It's wonderful to have you both here. Just a cast of creators. Yes. And Thanks. I heard about this exciting event <laughs> that is coming up on March 24th. You've planned a high concept. Yes. Costume ball. Right. Called Escape. Yeah, why are you yelling at me about it? You know what? I think that there's going to be a lot of yelling, okay, at the at the event. So I'm. A, it's a preview. It's a preview. Yeah, this event. is a preview. I heard your wife is coming. Yeah, she she. May How be. do you feel when I tell you I'm going to steal your wife from you? Hey, you go for it. Good good luck trying. Nobody else has been successful at it. Oh, <laughs> oh with them. Because oh. she never met a woman like me before. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm so I'm so 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 excited. We've been working on this party for like a year now thinking of ideas and what it could be. And my whole top line thing was like, I just want everyone to experience an out of body experience, (laughs) not drug related. Do you know what I mean? Like I want everyone to like show up as you are or put on a big costume and just like feel as extravagant as you want. I feel like so many people are, are are like addicted to celebrities and everyone wants Mm -hmm. to be a celebrity. So like, everybody's going to get like a celebrity s treatment. Like they walk in, they get like paparazzi kind of like taking their photos. And because I remember like back in the day when I was like volunteering, I actually wrangled the year that Fifi performed stuttering at the MMVAs in that big red car. Do you remember? Yeah. Was that the year Justin Bieber performed? Yeah, Justin Bieber was there. I I was backstage posting all the social. And Gaga performed that year Gaga performed Edge of Glory and Born This Way. And I remember like afterwards they they were like, sorry, like no wranglers at at the after party. And I was like, oh, man. So I like I, I like I like snuck over to Horseshoe yeah. Tavern and hopped over the fence to get into this party. And I was like, I, I hated how like uninvited I was and how, you know, I so big dreams were yeah. so big back then. Right. Like to yeah. wrangle and like to see all these celebrities like you want to be one of them. So to feel like left out was such a big feeling. So I was like, I want to create a party where like you don't feel that like, like yeah. you just like. You could buy your, your ticket and you could come and be treated as a celebrity because, like, we all want that celebrity, you know? So it's a great idea. It's going to be lit. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Really good. And, of course, I had to ask my famous friends to come come along. <laughs> I am performing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Very <laughs> excited. <laughs> excited. I'm excited, too. I'm I, excited. I was gagged the first time Fifi Dobson texted me. Yeah. <laughs> I was late, actually. That's what I texted you. Were you late? Yeah, I was like, because we've been writing together as well mm-hmm. and for her project. And the I think maybe the first text I sent was, oh, my God, I'm almost there. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so late. I'm always late. Like, my middle name should be late for sure. <laughs> Fifi Late Dobson. Phoebe Late Dobson. Yeah, Phoebe. Well, <laughs> we did another interview and the guy right. kept calling her Phoebe. Poor yeah. Guy. <laughs> we didn't help it. late today. No, I wasn't. You're right on time. I so, so far with you. me, been on time, Fifi. Look at you learning and growing. I can't believe that. It's always taken me uh, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. I mean, like, people always say drag queens are always late for everything. But I'm like, maybe. There's a transformation. Yeah. Transformation takes time. Oh, absolutely. Well, it was nice to see somebody else up at 530 this morning. Yeah, it was, I'm it up was, a, it was an early was nice. morning. You know, it reminds me of Pride Month. Like whenever Pride Month comes around, all the corporate sponsors are like, okay, we got to love drag queens this month. So you get called to so this weird thing where you're like just up at 4 a.m. painting to go perform in like a lawyer's office and you're doing a split on like the executive's <laughs> desk and you're like, hey, daddy. Hey, you know? daddy. <laughs> so how long does the transformation take? Can you do the splits? No. You can do the splits. Yeah. Oh, you can? Can you? I can. Uh, the transformation takes two hours. <laughs> But oh. can we talk about Casey and how snatched she is right now? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Like you don't I'm weight like training. water? Oh, I don't drink water. No, I drink <laughs> water, but I do a lot of weight training, cardio, yoga. Yeah. So I've been working awesome. out a lot. You're like right and tight. Yeah. Yeah. Is this Thanks, bad? Guys. Is this bad? I don't want to like judge you. No, no, no. no. It's right. This it's is like, good. No, I'm comfortable. I, but like you're, you're working really squeeze, like you're working. You it feels like you're working really hard at Yeah, at, working hard. And I do like I'm so proud of myself because like I use like the squat rack and I like fully like do 
like actual working out. I love that. And I didn't know how before, but I got a trainer and now I'm like actually like busting sets, man. Trainers Uh, help. They really do. I learned and now I know how to work out and now I actually have muscles. Like sometimes Nelson has uh, over the last couple months has gone to give me a hug and he's like, well, Case, you're Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been big muscles in there. I love that. Yeah, I'm thinking of of building a bit of a barrier (laughs) forever. Yeah, I love you Have you ever fallen in love with your trainer? I bet you have. I mean, I fall in love with almost everyone, but I, <laughs> I mm, no. no, not my trainers, no. not my trainers, not mm, not yet. Okay. Actually, in college, it was before I, I was out of the closet. Mm-hmm. I had a trainer named Kurt. Kurt, mm, yeah, and he did this thing where like he like straddled my back for me to do like back backups, back backs, back backups, <laughs> the opposite of a sit up. <laughs> oh, okay. And I that was my gay awakening. Yeah. Mm. That's love, what I knew. You're like, well, Kurt. I actually, I knew somebody who fell in love with their trainer and they lost like a hundred pounds and they were incredibly successful. Maybe that's okay. The key. And then their, the key? their trainer <laughs> got pregnant and got married and stopped training and they gained it all back. That's amazing. Oh. I love that. Yeah. Good. Um, well, if she's going to carry that child, <laughs> the if that right. woman is going to bear her body for a child, she could do whatever she wants. Oh, I mean, the yeah. person. Can I get an amen? Yeah. But yeah, the yeah, person who fell in love with her was the client. Oh, yeah. yeah that. Oh, the client so, gave it that's all fine. back. Falling in love with your trainer seems like a good recipe for success, though. Because you I always say that if you're going to like lo- love somebody, you like you can't help who, who you love, but you could choose to be with somebody. Mm-hmm. And like you when you choose to be with somebody, you have to like love them in every way, shape or form. If they go bald, if they gain a little bit of yeah. weight, if they are full, a head full of hair, if their physique yeah. is super great. Like, I feel like you could love everyone in every form. Yeah, How do you feel about course. that? <laughs> What do you mean? Like, I mean, like, if you're already with somebody and then they change. Yeah. Then they change. I mean, we all change. Yeah, Fifi, they transform into a big. <laughs> <laughs> we all change. I mean, I've gone through my own moments of like, yeah, moments. Lots of different moments. Lots of moments. But, you know, you hope that someone sticks by you through them and. They better. You know, like, I actually mm. saw this. It's why I was laughing is because I saw this thing on TV. <laughs> It's not Judge Judy, but it was like similar to Judge Judy. Is it yeah. paternity court? I, I, maybe. And it was like this guy who was like, I want a divorce with my wife. And the, the what do they call it? The juror? What are they, well, not the juror. The judge. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the judge. The judge was like, the why do you want a divorce? He's like, my wife put on weight and she promised me she'd never put on weight. And that she had just had children and all this stuff. And it was so disgusting. It was so sad. And he was just like, well, she doesn't look the way she looked in like yeah. the 80s. So like, I'm over it. Wow. And R- literally was begging for a divorce in front of this poor woman that just, he was like, oh, I just, and she wasn't, and it wasn't, it's just wrong. It's, just, it's, yeah. so, it's so wrong. wrong. It sounds like a good show. He's like, I even paid for, I even paid for a gym for her and everything. No. <gasps> yes. And she didn't lose it. So I just want a divorce. And I was just like, I mean, I would look at him at that point and be like, you can have the divorce because you're a piece of shit. Like, yeah, that's how I, I mean, like, what did he look like? Not good. Hitting the gym not day? cute and not good. Head. Yeah. Not cute. Not good. I yeah. Hate, I feel like that. If you are vain, honey. <laughs> that's why I was laughing. Have you seen, just seen, watch have you seen Paternity Court? <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'll tell you, I, I think I would enjoy it. It's the best. It's very like, it's you like are not the father. My favorite is when the, when the, when the guy like celebrates, like, like, Yes, I'm not the father. Then it's like the judge is like, looks at the guy and is like, but who's going to love this child now? Because that child loves you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're over there screaming, kicking and hollering because you're not the father. And that kid is not going to have a father. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like. You yeah. But so remember on the show. Maury, Maury was so funny because but I love oh, the guys so would like dance, you know, like mm. they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, and they would be doing all these dances or if they they thought they were they weren't the father and then they would be like, Ready to like, yeah. you know, pounce on the woman to be like, oh, I told you. And then they're, you are the father. And then they're like, oh, and then the woman's like, I told you. And I told you. It's always really fun. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I that was very it. dramatic, but that's how. No, it's how they're, they're good. They're, those, those episodes are good. I've seen ones where you can't imagine the woman would, you know, think one guy is his father, but she, she's on like the sixth or seventh I guy. She's and testing. good for her for like. Yeah, my mom has, we all have four different dads. So I love that. Yeah, but you know who is no. all of them. No, we don't. No. Oh, because sometimes you you just be collecting loads back to back. You don't know which which who's yeah. taken. You know, like you don't know. And hey, I, I love, know who my dad is, but I also love when a right. woman is like, "I fucked him and him and him." Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see whose sperm gets to the egg the fastest. 
who do I book on the show first? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who cares? I think that's great. Because <laughs> men go around dropping their loads and whoever, so that's why can't w- w- women just collect them? It's International yeah, look, Women's Day, baby. Yeah, yeah it's, like look, that it's a, sperm. It's a recipe for success either way, I it's guess. Like that sperm. <laughs> Anyways, that's how I feel. Great. Right. Nice. Love it. How do you feel about it? <laughs> well, it depends how complicated you want your life to be. Yeah. Now, I, I don't like a complicated life, so I try and, uh, you know, avoid those types of circumstances. Right. If, you, if you want things that's to get complicated, <laughs> go for it. It gets pretty complicated. Oh, so yeah, it gets complicated. I love it. Avril Lavigne complicated great yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. I was at yeah. the Olivia Rodrigo concert and Avril Lavigne came out and performed that with her and I shot. <laughs> That's complicated Diary, right there. Yeah. I, think, I hope you were the wearing show? pants. Uh, no. Which show did you go to with Avril? It was um, Nelly. Uh, no, I saw Nelly there. It was Gaga. Gaga. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Love mm-hmm. it. Love yeah. Gaga. Yeah, it was great. So show. Were you, did you sing before you came up with your you know transitional character or oh. did you like did you sing as well, mark <laughs> um i like singing was always what, what what's a pipe dream what, what what does that mean a pipe dream when you have a dream that wait what is it it's like a, it's like a side dream yeah it's like but, you it's dream but are they, like, they yeah. have a pipe dream no it's like i think someone dream. doesn't think that you're gonna have yeah, it though like, like you can't make like, it happen right yeah. mm-hmm. like you have a dream but oh that's not realistic right. that's just a pipe dream you'll never do it yeah kind of thing <laughs> so like singing was always that kind of thing from for me where it was like i really wanted to be a television host mm-hmm. you know i'd like go hanging out much all the time as you know yeah. i'd see her there all the time yeah and then i got an internship at mtv canada and then i got on ytv where I was able to like express some like fun rapping, singing, but not seriously. It was always in a gimmicky way. Like we had like the pineapple song about SpongeBob SquarePants and stuff like that. But it was never like, I want to be a pop star deep down inside. I mean, like when I was younger, baby, I would like put on PCD live in London (laughs) DVD on my little TV in my room. I'd put up these like sparkly curtains. I'd like pin them to the thing. I love that. <laughs> I bought the, these like um like you know like the pot lights that you can like rotate. And I would like yeah, turn yeah. them all on the wall. Oh mm-hmm. my god! And babe, I would like I would like press press play and then like get behind behind the curtain and and like turn the fan on. You're manifesting. And, like, wait for the wait wait for the cue and baby I'd come out and perform buttons. I'd be like you and sing and oh, in my bedroom. <laughs> I think so. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I wanted it so bad, but I was like, it was not tangible. Like I'm not going to be a pop star, you know, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then, so I like got over that. And then why TV happened, I got some performance opportunities. I was doing this thing called who wants a t-shirt mm-hmm. where I'd give up free shirts. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 Where I would like, I, they, they were like, Hey, you have 10 minutes. Just like just crowd hype. Like just go on stage and like mm-hmm. tell people like when to uh, like, like cheer and clap and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to perform. <laughs> so I like created this track called who wants a teacher. Cause I was like, no one cares about who I am, but they're going to scream for free shit. So I created the song and then that kind of became like, I got a taste of performing and I was like, I love this. Yeah. I so then when, once I won drag race, you know, like you, this big iconic things happens and in all the press interviews the next day, everyone's like, so like what's next? And you're like, I just started, you little bitch. Yeah. And I had a moment where I was like, yeah, like I really want to do music, but like so many drag queens go out and do music and they release a single and it kind of like is whatever. But I was like, I really want, want to make an impact and I really want this to be a cool project. And I just did it and it 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 worked. It yeah, just worked. Fantastic. Like yeah. it just like if you have good intentions and like you know, I love music. So my, my dad was a DJ girl growing up. All my brothers were, were DJs. My grandparents were fam- famous singers in Guyana and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was like, in my blood. Yes. <laughs> and um, so I just made it happen. I don't know. So to answer, that's so long winded. I'm so sorry. No, it's no, it's perfect. I love oh, it. No. That's the whole point of the podcast. What was crazy be about sitting be beside Fifi, we talked about this when we wrote, when we wrote together, <laughs> was that I remember driving to college and like blasting ghosts and singing that bridge <laughs> over <laughs> and over and over again in the car. So to be working with someone like her is just like, yeah, amazing. Cool. You're did, an icon. Did you start as a writer and you realized you could write great songs? Did you start as a singer? And then like, how does that, the start of things happen? Do you know you're good at writing or good at singing? And other um, it's kind of all intertwined. When I was young, I was always performing and singing. That was kind of how I made um, things lighthearted in the house. So I would sing all the time and, I started making karaoke tapes, actually. My mom got me this karaoke machine, and I was, like, maybe 12. And um, 
you could basically take off any singer and mute the, the lead singer and then sing oh, over top of it. Okay. So you could have any normal CD. And what do song? It. What song was your oh, song? Oh, I did everybody. I had like 24 songs really? on like a cassette. <laughs> it was like Janet, it oh. was Shania, it was Celine, it was Mariah, it was everyone. <laughs> That's and great. I would send them to record labels. I found this record label book and it would show all their labels in Canada and US, whatever. So I would just send them, send them, send them. And I actually started talking to Sony Music at that time, which uh, is now still my publishing. And uh, David Quillico actually gave me, like he still worked at Sony and was talking to me when I was young, like how, how to help me and giving me encouragement and what I should do and da, 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 da. Anyways, so then I went to a music theater high school and just Randolph? kept um, Wexford. Wexford. Yeah. And I just kept doing music. And finally, someone heard me and they liked my random karaoke demo tape. That's so And cool. I started working with Zomba, um, which was affiliated with Jive, uh, who had Britney Spears and NSYNC. And it was like the biggest, you know, pop label. But unfortunately, they kind of were directing me um, in, in a way that was more pop R&B and it just wasn't my vibe and I was still trying to figure out who I was at that point I was like 15 you know right. um, and I was writing and and then I met Jay and James who were in a studio next to me who were in the band Prozac also in Philosopher Kings and uh, they loved my voice and they were like you know they had this punk pop song and they were like you should sing on this as demo and I, I sang on it and they were like, holy shit, like, this is, this is you. Like, you, you feel that, right? And I was like, I've been trying to tell everybody. I'm like, <laughs> this is what I want to do. Like, I need guitars. I need this whole thing. And so I split up with Zomba and basically, well, I took the free lunch. And then I said, you know, you thank you so much for the opportunity. But like, I got to go with Jay and James. And, you know, Jay couldn't promise me that we were going to get signed or anything. But he was like, you'll make the album you want to make. And then we met Chris Smith, um, management and Chris Smith and, um, he brought me on board and got me signed to Island Def Jam and it just shot like a rocket after that, you know? So it was, it was so crazy. iconic. You were everywhere. Yeah. Oh. It was so cool seeing you like launch to stardom. Especially like seeing like a brown skinned girl. Like that doesn't happen. It was definitely like um doing the genre and, you know, being a black girl from Scarborough, like it, a lot of people were like, What, what? the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know, like it was a weird time, but we just, my team and I, we just, we believed and this is just who I am. I, I mean, if you look through my years, it's like my leather jacket, this, my hair, my, like, it just hasn't changed really. It's just who I am and I've never been able to be anyone else. So. Yeah. Obsessed. Are there a lot of success stories of artists who get pushed into a lane that isn't their lane by a label? Of course. And then I it mean, like works out? Well, it seems like. I mean, like it, a, but there's a lot of artists that change lanes like Pink or, you know. The Pink story is my favorite. Yeah. Like, like that Trouble album. It, it's, it's one of those things like, look, when you first get your foot in the door, you're still trying to figure out who you are, too. There's a lot of mm -hmm. growth that happens mm -hmm. in becoming an artist. And even your team, you're all trying to put the pieces together, you know. How do you be the, the most authentic version of yourself? But also there are doors that open quicker if you do certain things. So, you know, I just always seem to take the harder door <laughs> and like just to be like, oh, I don't know, that one looks too easy. I'm going to try this one. <laughs> um, but it, it's, I don't know. I, I think that people change genres all the time. Yeah. Uh, isn't SZA doing something relatively similar as well? Like finding her authentic uh, voice. Remember when and... she quoted you as one of her fucking references, Fifi? <laughs> like, did you not like explode everywhere on the floor? It's really cool. You know, it's like one of those things. It's just really cool. It's been it's been awesome to to um, just be a part of in any way, in any of capacity, course. you know, of, of uh, someone's journey or. Uh, voice you know it's so weird being an artist too because you don't realize your influence on people yeah mm -hmm. like you're always yeah. like at your grind and pe yeah. and you walk into your room and they, everyone's telling you you're great like, i'm like i'm a fan of you and i just right. sing your songs you know and, and all, all these things but like you kind of like in your darkest hours can forget how iconic you are but then like someone like says i was like for my album yeah i was listening to fifi dobson and everyone's like what the <laughs> fuck you know like hold on a minute what right <laughs> fifi <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, so cool. I think it's really awesome, too, when women, like, are, um, you know, supporting each other. And, Absolutely. And, like, you know, and that's something that wasn't as big in the early 2000s. You know, I felt when women were being pinned against each other, like Christina Aguilera and Brittany and Jessica oh, Simpson sure. and Mandy Moore and, and, like, so many different women being pinned against each other and yeah. me and Avril. And, you know, it was always, like, comparing, 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 and which was ridiculous because as women, we just want to find other women that we can relate to and like mm -hmm. someone to talk to yeah. and um the industry was just so crazy like that 
early on. And now I feel like we've taken control of that narrative and just being like, nah, like, fuck that shit. Like, she's awesome. And I want to support that. So. But is that a byproduct of the fan or is it sort of a byproduct of the media or like who's creating that men. environment? Yeah, man. I was going to say that too. <laughs> the byproduct of men. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, so like who's hotter type stuff? Who's hotter? Like, especially when, when she was coming up, it, it was so like blonde girl, skinny. Right. Like who's prettier, Christina right. versus Britney. Right. Yeah. And um, Jessica all and in Jessica, there. Yeah, you know, and Jessica. And like, constantly. and then there was like Hillary Duff was coming up too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it was like all these girls that they were just and the tabloids were so yeah, big they were so in. vicious yeah. and yeah. they were so yeah. so mean yeah like they wouldn't be i mean thankfully things have totally changed because the things they would say about people were so fucking mean yeah yeah it was couldn't be skinny enough couldn't be uh, you know uh, it couldn't be any enough like yeah, you put on weight you put on weight like it's just like it was crazy or you're, t- you're yeah. too skinny yeah not skinny yeah. enough like, yeah oh, like, and nowadays it's like the Kardashians and like the Bella Hadids and the Haley Bieber's are kind of like introducing toxic behavior back into the world. If you're not, you know, it's kind of like the same idea. Like if you're not skinny enough, like we we're talking about this in, in the car, like um, uh, Haley Bieber being the like catty feud, yeah. towards, you Selena know, it's like they're giving back mm-hmm. into the whole idea of girl on girl feuds. Yeah, yeah that right. mean girls and it's so better. unnecessary. Yeah. It's and who so knows if it's all calculated and planned? Right. Like everyone has things to pr- promote. But when, you know, the, these girls have such big audiences and it's showing other girls to like be mean and catty online, like it's the worst. Like being yeah. bullied is the, the worst yeah, thing it ever, is the worst. you know, so to promote it, to get some sales off your makeup line is kind of messed mm-hmm. up. Especially in the years where you're young, where everything is like magnified and more important mm-hmm. than it is even as an adult. Totally. I was just thinking, I remember I saw this again on TV, something else I saw on TV, maybe I don't remember what it was. Um, maybe it was Shark Tank or someone had this idea. And, and when the person was talking about the idea, it didn't seem very like thought out. But it would be interesting, though, if we did have on like Instagram or something like, you know, when you press like share, right, uh-huh. mm-hmm. that it holds for a second and goes, are you sure you want to share? This? Right, 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 right. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Instead of just like, you know, because you can't really like just. Yeah, like totally sh- throwing. Sh- yeah, down. yeah. It's you know like when mean? you're like mad at somebody, you just have to write a letter, yeah, but never like, send it. I it would be, yeah. it would be exactly. interesting if it held for a second. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. to well, give you an option. It's kind of like how on Twitter, if you haven't read an article, it says, "Do you want to read the article first? Right? Mm-hmm. Because right. people were sharing misinformation on things, and it that's why they Twitter's a wild it. place. Right. Oh, yeah. oh Twitter is wild. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you, wild. I'd wow. like something like that on a hang up the call <laughs> on my iPhone. <laughs> You, know? really? you sure you want to hang up? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe think <laughs> about that for a second. <laughs> yeah. Who are you yeah. arguing with to, to hang up on? You know what? Time. It actually comes from just a, a get by accident hanging up sometimes with oh, it in your pocket. Yeah. But but I can see how it would be taken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't do a lot of just uh, hanging up. The only We're person I probably hang, hang up on is It's not as fun. Like it used to be like when you're like, you oh, know, it used yeah, to be so like, much better. Uh, uh, and now uh, it's like, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like it has to be like an ex boyfriend or something I was like hung up on. Hung up on. Yeah. You can't really Yeah, whatever, it. fucker. Yeah, but <laughs> slamming the phone down is a lot more, feels better. Oh, man. When you get hung up on, it's like, really? It's one of those moments, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. Like, Who, me? Really? Yeah. Yeah. How could you? I love it. Sorry, I'm chewing at everyone's ears. Uh, no, no problem. <laughs> it's ASMR now. Fun. We uh, thought for a bit we wanted to do a bit of a couple shows where we were eating with with chefs, but then Casey and I were here enjoying a lunch like mid, and, and we had the mics and it was on, like, and all we heard was a... Like, it's not getting the mics. It's like that's I hilarious. don't think that that concept no one's gonna for a show is gonna work. And that's hilarious. <laughs> Although I, I kind of like that shit. I, yeah, I yeah, kind of like. Um, We're thinking about when it. I used no, to watch me. movies and you hear like the clanking of like the cutlery. Yeah. I don't know oh, yeah. that always sticks with me. Like, yes. in movies it, and it, good it's, atmosphere. It's a feeling. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't know. The feeling. What so, is ASM? Wait, A S M R. What is that? What does it stand for? Um, thank you for coming here today. Yeah. I think it's a sensory um, thing, right? Yeah. Yes. I think it's kind of horny, though. It's like it's a little... It's very horny. It can, it, can, yes. it can give you like a tickling in your ears when it makes you have like... Shit. Like, it's what just like... I have, to skip, very horny. I have yeah. to skip over it on TikTok. Autonomous like, sensory... <laughs> it, um, ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Um, it, a term used to describe a tingling or static-like goosebumps that... Um, or a result from auditory stimulation. I think it kind of oh, turns me on. I think gonna... I have to not, I can't. No, you got it, no, no, no. I have to like. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm, can't handle it. <laughs> I haven't gotten into ASMR. Maybe, maybe I should. Neither. No, I'm going to, you know, die. My life is ASMR now. Right, sure. You know, it's when they're like, <laughs> let me do your hair. And then they do your hair and it. 
and you're like, well, I got to change this. this, this I got to go. This I gotta go. go I right. Gotta. Yeah, it's not for me either. So, so Fifi, on uh, March 28th, you're performing in L.A. I am. Roxy yeah. Theater. Tell baby. us a bit about that show. Um, <laughs> the lights are going to go down and she's going to come up and perform a song. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna, right? I'm Where headlining is it? a show in L.A. at Roxy. Um, it's going to be awesome. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, How do you choose your set list? You have so many songs. Is it a feeling or is it set every show? Uh, set list wise, it, we it, we hit the singles for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we try to pull from each album, each like era kind of. So we have some stuff from Sunday Love and we'll do um, all the way back, you know, from the first album, um, some covers. Oh, that's fun. Uh, yeah. I love covers. Yeah. Covers, love covers. Are, okay. covers are fun. <laughs> covers do you have a fun. favorite cover like of all time? I get wild uh, with Welcome to the Jungle, for sure. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. That'd be fun to sing. What song yeah. is that? Welcome to the Jungle. Guns and Roses. <laughs> what song is that? Welcome to the Jungle. We By got who? fun and games. Guns and Roses. <laughs> you would know it. You would know it. Yeah. You they. would know it. You know where you are? Huh? You're in the jungle, baby. You know. Um, that gonna, part you wouldn't You're going to die. But the Welcome to the Jungle <laughs> part. <laughs> for a girl that grew up I'll in Scarborough. I'll play it for you. She knows. Th- it's you from know. the 80s. Well, it, they're... I mean, Axl Rose was so hot. And Slash is in the band. He did. Oh, no, he Slash. Yeah, Slash is in Guns N' Roses. He used to. He's you know. not hot now. Is he not? sad, though. I don't no. want to say Is he like daddy hot? <laughs> show, me, show me a photo. I'll tell you if he's hot or He not. could be daddy hot <laughs> if he took care of... Uh, I don't want to say anything because I don't want Axl Rose coming for me. Yeah. Me neither. He's still amazing. Oh. Flash you a picture. He's still amazing. Or Slash. I'm sure he's fine. No. <laughs> he's... He no, looks he's like this now. Wait, is this the latest, latest? No, that's not no. the latest. Later, he got. You know, he got better. He got okay because that was no, he, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna um, investigate this further later. They're rock stars, whatever. <laughs> people, right? People we grow change. and change. Yeah, people, people grow and change. change. So, how long did they tape the Canada Drag Race over? Yeah. One month. You guest month. judged. I did. Not my season. No, second. What season? Second. Season second. Two second. or three? Two. Two. That must be it? an exhausting month. Oh my god! I <laughs> I remember my, 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 my friend was a makeup artist on it or is, yeah. And they're like, "Yeah, Fifi came and she got so invested, she started crying." I was like, "That's oh, like strong Fifi, Fifi. Yeah. strong Fifi." Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Um, you're not really prepared. First of all, we were still in pandemic, and yeah. so I had to kind of be away from humans for like 14 days and then oh yeah yeah come on set just to do the one just show. to do the one yeah. show oh, and so wow. um wow. there was that those emotions and feelings but then you're not really prepared for the dancing for your life and like that moment of like lip fighting sync for your life. yeah lip sync for your life and like fighting for your position or like proving that you need to be there or have to be there what that moment you could almost feel the heartbeats in the room yeah and I broke down because I know what it's like to feel like you have to fight for your position Mm -hmm. and to always feel like you're trying to prove yourself or am I good enough? And, and and your dreams are right there. And it broke me down because I, I, you know, from the very beginning of my career, I've had performances where I've fought, 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 fought and had people boo me or, you know, talk down to me or talk shit to me because I was a girl or, you know, I've, I've, it's been crazy. So I just, it just, it broke my heart. Yeah. You know, it broke my heart. It's, it's a hard position to be in. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, I was in the bottom. So to answer your question, sorry, we shot over a month, mm-hmm. November, 2019. Wow, it must be an exhausting month. It was the best month of my life. I was yeah. obsessed. You're, I feel like you, you, I that's quit. You, that's kid, what you would that's, want. That's, my, that's my jam. Yeah, there's like that. There's nothing else you would rather be doing. Hundred yeah. percent. And like they take away your phone. You're sequestered. It's the so you best. You can't have your phone. I loved it. Oh, that sounds. You were hilarious on because the show. it's like you. You don't even got to worry about anything. Uh-huh. And I was like, this is my TV vacation. I quit my TV job to now just compete right. on TV. Like I'm lucky. Like this. Seems- yeah. Why didn't you get your phone though? Just curious. Uh, you say you couldn't like. So you didn't post anything that would give away anything give away anything and like no one you're not supposed to tell anyone that you're there so you kind of like disappear off of social media for a month yeah yeah it probably keeps you like in the in, and in then the you're game. not influenced by any outside things of what's going on exactly wow. in the yeah. world yeah because you can't talk about like current events and stuff so like if anything happens right um 
but it was amazing. It's an emotional roller coaster. It was like at first I walked in with like my TV face on for sure and like knew, you know, this is the game I'm going to play and da, da da da. The first time I was in the bottom, I did I, I drove all night by Celine Dion mm-hmm. and turned the motherfucking party and I was like, when I did did that, I was like, I'm going to win this fucking show. Like, I feel like such a star. But the second time I was in the bottom was like the hardest because it Mm -hmm. was like, that's when the bumps in the road got a little bit harder. And what Fifi was saying of like, your dreams are right in front of you, but you could be sent home. It was tough because we did this improv challenge and, and I thought, and I did the thing where I thought I did okay. So in your head, you're like, I'll I'll at least be safe. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, you you go on the runway and you put on your your dress that you spent like, you know, thousands of dollars on just to compete and you're wearing for 10 minutes and they look at you and they're like, what happened in that challenge? You were so bad. And this dress, meh. You're like, yeah, hey. and then there's this moment where inside of my um, soul, I'm like, I quit my job to be here. Like, this is crazy that I quit my job, spent 40 grand on outfits and wigs and new things to like be here wow. and like I could literally be sent home. Mm. Wow. That's this is like an experience like no other. Like yeah. it is like yeah. what? Absolutely. And then yeah. if I get sent home, like why TV's not gonna take me back. Right. Like I didn't win <laughs> Canada's drag race. Like but in my brain I was like um, I'm just gonna hustle and grind and make sure that I'm something because yeah. like there's I'm not gonna take no wow. for an answer. But then when, you know, they they put me up for elimination, because at first there they tell you your shit. And then they pull you back on stage and then they like make you wait to see if you're like yeah. in the bottom or not. Yeah. And then when they're like, you know, Priyanka, you're out for elimination. It's like, oh shit. Like I didn't prepare like a lip sync like I did for I Drove All Night. Right. Yeah. So like the we did Ali X, Hello. Love that song. And the track starts and you just kind of like fight for your life to this mid-tempo song and it turned out to be one of my most iconic lip syncs that I'm still known for because oh, like yeah. survival mode will do something to you yeah. you know it makes you it makes you remember all the things that make you a star and it's your time to sell it and just like go for it and not be yeah. in your head so oh. yeah and some people crumble yeah in yeah. and, and those moments of yeah. like you know it is that moment for you to be like I'm going to prove to you mm-hmm. why I'm here and it is survival but I've seen so many crumble too of it's like tough, yeah. I just can't pressure. do this yeah yeah, yeah it's hard because it's not adrenaline for thing. everyone too mm-hmm. yeah right. and also I feel bad sometimes because like you could be the greatest drag queen in the world but not not a good drag race queen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you gotta be good in your confessionals you gotta be good on the runway you gotta be good in the challenges mm-hmm. so it's tough when you're especially when, when you're like so celebrated out at the local bars and everyone's like yeah. you should be on drag race one day uh-huh. like what and then you go to the competition and it just eats you it's like so heartbreaking right and, so, and that level of emotion and that level of stress is what you're feeling like you can sense that in the room yeah yeah it's i'm i'm very sensitive to energy in the first place like uh, so that was just a lot and i like ugly cried too i tried to be cute though it was, it was, cute, okay. it was cute cry. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cute. i love cry i love cry i'm a crier yeah. crier crier Such down a crier. <laughs> happy crier too so initially when you two met, was it over writing music or was it over? I love this story. Yeah, yeah it's a good How story. Take it away. <laughs> okay, so I was in, I had, when I was in um, college, I went to Niagara College for like broadcast and radio okay. and stuff because I wanted to be on television. Nice. And I had a blog, marksuknanon.com. <laughs> nice. And I emailed, I, it. I, I was probably Chris Smith's management at the time, right? 2011, right? Being like, hey, I'm a college student and I have a blog and I see that Fifi's coming to town to St. Catharines to play Barracuda. I'm almost certain it's called Barracuda. I don't look it up. And I was wondering if I could interview her. And like, they were like, sure. And I was like, what the hell? Okay. So I drive to this show, watch Fifi perform. And then after the show, who is it? What was the guy's name? Ray? Yeah, Ray. 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 Chaos. <laughs> Ray comes and gets me scattered. He's mm-hmm. looking in the audience for me. He's like, are you Mark? And I was like, yeah. He's like, come here. They like <laughs> pull me to this this basement room. Yeah. And I'm sitting across from Fifi Dobson. This is when like Ghost was a big record and mm-hmm. stuttering. Like she, you know, it was the thing. And that's how we first met in that room. And I interviewed her about like 
you know, tell me about this song and this lyric. I did my research. I had my oh little cute cards. It was great. And, but it, it ended up being such a good conversation between the I two of us and like talking about heartbreak. And she was waiting for this guy to text her who yeah. texted her in the middle of the interview. It was like, it was magic. <laughs> yeah, like it was, it, I remember that interview so well. And I remember we were talking about love because Joy, mm. that album was about like finding my new, finding love and finding my happiness. And I was like, yeah, you know, um, we were having this deep conversation and then my eyes lit up and I went, oh my God, I like, yeah, I just, <laughs> and I like ran in the other room. I think and ran back, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." Just that yeah. I've been waiting for this text, and I hadn't heard. And, yeah. <laughs> that's really cute. It yeah. was amazing. So that's how we first initially met, and then I think you know, like follows, and you kind of keep tabs on on each other from afar, and yeah. you kind of see uh, other people's stuff here and there, and then, and then it was kind of this year I reached out to her management. Spoke Entertainment. I was like, hey, like, is Fifi introdu- introduced? It, um, what's that word called? In, in, Introduction. Interested. Oh, interested. <laughs> <laughs> in co-write writing. And it was immediate, yes. It was like, yes, of she'll course. do it. Name of a place and we'll just do it. And let's hide. And then we wrote a song together. And it was yeah. so fun because yeah. she walks into the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we're like, so like, what kind of song do we want to write today? And I was like, I want to write like happy songs. And then <laughs> Fifi, I don't know where it goes. Well, <laughs> Fifi's like, well, hey, when I met Lionel Richie, Lionel said, if you write a love song, you'll have a hit song. Yeah. You have, and if you just write you a, have love a love song. song. Yeah. If you, if you write a love song, you'd be set for life. I'd be I'd be life. life. <laughs> and she said it's so soft that all of us laughed so hard after it was amazing. It was such an incredible experience. And we wrote such a great song. I brought it back to my boy, my boyfriend. It was yeah. like, this is like, are, are, are you like drag Drake? Like you're saying about your, <laughs> your feelings and stuff. The thing is too, is like, I can't help it. Like I have to like, I'm like, let's talk about your heart. Yeah. Let's I love it. it. It makes good. It makes great music. Yeah, so it really does. I'm so excited for that song. Me too. Ah! So y- you'll sit together in a room mm-hmm. and work at a piano or work at just like, how do you, how, what's the process like? We had Anjali there. Mm-hmm. She's another icon. Mm-hmm. And we had Tyler saying, who's a, a producer in the room. So it's kind of like, what kind of beats are you feeling? And he'll start kind of like playing okay, beats and start- chords and stuff. And then Fifi and Anjali would kind of make like yeah. chord adjustments along yeah. the way. Like, oh, like instead of that, let's go up or whatever the case is. It's always different too, you know, like whatever session you're in. But for me, I find that... um having chords really help mm-hmm. again because because uh, I, I like writing a, about love and stuff so that pulls on an emotion and i'll just start you know for my own sessions that's how i do it and i'll just start singing melodies and we'll just record whatever melodies come out of my mouth and then we'll cut and paste pieces that sound yeah. like they could work and that's kind of what we that's started what we did, doing yeah. um for that session but yeah it was so easy it felt like it too. was very easy yeah, yeah. it was what, it was really rewarding what's the song called what is it called? Forgot. We don't even. <laughs> yeah. We're like, what is it called? We'll get back to that. The working title is "Love Is." Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. But okay. is that a good title for song "Love Is"? Like, what? What is this called? Love. We'll We're working it out. It's only. Yeah. It's crazy because it's just a, it's in demo it. form. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good for a demo, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but now we gotta like take it and make notes and re-record the vocal yeah. and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been amazing. Writing music and like demoing is crazy town. Mm-hmm. It is wild because for my first EEP, I like bought five songs. It was like I worked with these producers and was like, I'm paying for five songs, yeah. and no matter what these five songs are, I'm gonna release them. Whereas in demo world, we're just like trying stuff out and then we kind of pick the best of the best and put them on the record. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like a whole new experience right. for me. Wild. Yeah. It's exciting. Artistry. The music is, oh, yeah. is crazy. We're about to release a new single and it's like, right. uh, yeah, March 24th. Same. On the day of the party. Yeah, same day oh. as party. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Are you, are you yeah. performing it there? Yes. Yes. That's, oh, that's what I've been yeah. called. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. But it was, it's, this process kind of has been interesting making this album because, um, uh, I kind of went back to my roots to my punk pop roots and this song is like a two minute and 13 second song and it's full punk rock so cool. um, and it's called Hungover funny enough uh, as I'm drinking this lovely drink <laughs> I love that the last time I was hungover was not fun it's not fun to be hungover no. hangovers suck oh, but yeah, yeah. It, oh well, <laughs> yeah, well but, but the but song's they, oh, good well. but the song is good yeah yeah. The hungover song will cure your hangover. Bam. Boom. Yeah. It'll definitely either do that or put you back into a bar. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, I love Sometimes that. that's all you need when you have a hangover. It's just like hair of the dog. Hair of the like, dog. Ah, yeah. She's back. I love a, I love a hungover brunch, like a mimosa yeah. or an extra spicy Caesar. Are you a Caesar girl? Um, I'm more of a mimosa girl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm a Caesar. I love a spicy. I love, love it. extra spicy, spicy baby. Caesar. Well, I'm super excited for your party. Okay. I think Talia is going to join. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible and amazing. Yeah. When was the last time you cried? Yesterday. Why? Good, a good cry or bad cry? Uh, I was in like in a butting heads with my boyfriend, so I wasn't oh. afraid. Oh. But it's fine today. Did you resolve? Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, good. Is it like a don't go to sleep angry kind of thing? No. Oh. Oh, uh, yes. I went to sleep angry and crying. And I woke up in the morning. I was like, okay, hug it out. Right. Sometimes time has to pass. Yeah. 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 Okay, what's, what's what should we ask him? <laughs> yeah, what should you ask me? Ask him question. Well, last time you cried. I was thinking about it as she was answering, but I can't remember her. It's cry. not for a lack of crying, but I can't specifically remember. Okay, you're not, but you're not a crier. But you did just recently have a baby. Yes. So maybe that's when you cried. Did you cry when your baby came or were you like, oh no. Yes, we cried in relief when our baby was born. In relief? Right. Yeah. Was there complications? We had a, a very difficult time getting pregnant. Okay. And um, through COVID, you... I was never able to hear her heartbeat through entire oh. through COVID until the day she was delivered. Oh, wow. Wow. So, um, just uh, that so was beautiful. the most relief I've ever felt was oh, that. Wow. So, wait, you weren't able to hear the heartbeat because the doctors couldn't find the heartbeat? No, no because the only person going to the to the clinic was Italian. They wouldn't let me in. Guess with you to the hospital. They wouldn't let me in. So it's like you can feel the baby kicking, but it's like the first day you hear oh, so your so baby's heartbeat a, is the oh, day. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, didn't yeah, get the yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. How old are you? I'm uh, 33. How old's your wife? Uh, older, like 35, 30. Yeah, we older don't say than that. Yeah, we don't yeah. talk about it. Oh, we don't talk about that? No. <laughs> oh, she's older. Oh, and I was thinking like, I've, he- yes. I've heard a lot of stories about like women in their 30s, 30 to 40s, like having oh, issues getting pregnant. She's and old. I was like, is yeah. it because we like grew up eating chicken fingers and fries? Like, well, how? You know but what? I'm not sure, know but the crazy thing is we, like, went through, we went through a lot of fertility stuff, yeah. like rounds of IVF. We unfortunately <laughs> did seven. Okay. If you know mm. the rounds, it's not pretty. Um, but we ended up getting pregnant naturally after the whole seven of them. They say that a lot, though, when you... Is that ridiculous? Oh, yeah. 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 Naturally. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. <laughs> All natural. That was a flex. Yeah. But, you know, we tried the IVF yeah. thing and we paid lots when's of money. But, guess, you cried, but guess what? How I just couldn't pregnant. do what I did. I am a pre. When's the last time you cried? <laughs> last time I cried was I was on set of my music video. Oh, I'm also, I also have a single con coming out in April. Yeah, so right. no one asked me that. What can I interview okay. this? Oh. <laughs> My backup dancer, Karina, we were like about to do a take and out of nowhere, she was like, hey, Priyanka, I just want to tell you that I'm really proud of you. And it like caught me so off guard because I was like, this is a beautiful, I I just felt so like appreciated and seen like when you're a music video, I'm very hands on with all my projects. Like we go through the shot list with the director, we, we brainstorm, I make the schedules, like it's very, I'm very involved and for someone to pull you out and be like, like, look at what you're doing. This is like, you're breaking barriers. You have these like four POC dancers. Like you're this like brown pop star queen. Like you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cause you forget. It's that same idea of like, you forget your impact. So I, that was last time that, that I cried. Wow. I had to hold it back. I was like, <laughs> cause the makeup was already, yeah, well, we you were really in like, can't cry. A, a hour 12 of, yeah. you know, the beard was starting to show through yeah. the makeup and stuff. We had to be really careful, but. <laughs> Yeah, Aww. it was. I love shooting music videos. They're so, fun. so Your music fun. videos look great. Yeah, they're cinematic so universe, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah they it's look awesome. Great. It's amazing. Fucking expensive, that. Jesus Christ! I bet they look. They, <laughs> they, they look, expensive. look really expensive. <laughs> yeah. Anyone, anyone got any change I can take home with me? Yes. <laughs> I gotta pay for the videos yeah, exactly. and the clothes. Well, last time you cried, you didn't say. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Pisces. I mean, I cried last night. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. What is it like? Like, we, like, paint, paint the picture. Mm-hmm. Love, <laughs> boys. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I cried last night. I cried the day before that too, and I think I cried the day before that too. Like tears are like so- so- like sabisha. Well, the thing is, like when I'm like sad. <laughs> I'll like put on like I'll make myself cry even harder. So I'll put on like guns and like, roses. Everybody hurts. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, everybody hurts or like God, something like really one. emotional, and I'll just sit there and like push it further because I just want to get it all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. I think better to get get it out than hold it in. 
Oh, yes, I have to get it out. Definitely. I'll cry on the street. I mean, I have uh-huh. to get it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The people much. in like Nashville are there. So if you cry again, <laughs> it's raining. People it's must right. be crying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love this. I love it. Amazing. Any other questions for us? Well, yeah, I just saw. I just interviewed the cast of Scream. Okay, which is amazing. Yeah, that's fun. and they're incredible with the outfit. Scream mask. Yeah, I love so the I need to ask you all, what's your favorite scary movie? Um, I like uh, you- Seven, and okay, uh, I also. Like great the concept. first Scream movie because Drew Barrymore's character with the blonde hair is named Casey. Hey. hey she dies first. She does die first. Yeah, I'm also the original Scream. <laughs> original like Scream. Yeah. It's a good one because it's a bit comedy, comedic. You're like, too. my life. <laughs> uh, uh, my favorite scary movies are The Exorcist, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yo, wow. that one is yeah. messed up. Yeah, that you're a scary movie watcher. I am. Frequent? I watch them alone too, and I live in the oh. woods. I watch them alone. Do you actually? Wow. Like, yeah, I, I love them. I get off on them. I mean, I, that sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. No, that's oh, fine. Wow, you're, you're, but, you're an artist. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean the get off part. I don't like sit there and just get off watching the horror movies. Right, right, right. <laughs> You oh, like horror movies. I too. do. I love. I love a good serial killer murder. Me too. Those are my mm-hmm. favorite. His last scream was like emotional roller coaster. Yeah. it's so good. Yeah, it was wild. You like horror movies too? Love, love, yeah. love, 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 love. Yeah. The, when you get older, though, I find that again they get scarier. Yeah. Which is so That's, weird. The ones with like because youth murderers yeah. scare scare yeah. me yeah. in a different way because like it just seems it's too more real. real. Yeah. But I like the possession stuff and like the. <laughs> The deep and meaningful psychology. Like yeah. Those stuff. make me happy. Yeah. Oh, that's Sinister good. is good too. Sinister, oh, Sinister is good. Sinister screams. <laughs> Halloween's are good. Yeah, Halloween's are good. But anyways, that's my last Except question. the last Halloween, I'm sorry. I didn't watch it. The last Halloween, it they just butchered it. Stabbed yeah. the, stabbed it. <laughs> stabbed Died. it to bits. It's too bad. Sorry for your loss. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Fifi, so through your career, um, what have you learned about listening to your your heart versus your head? Like, how do you balance listening to your heart or your head? Ooh, My heart always gets me in trouble. It's like literally the thing that guides me in, in writing and how I create. Um, but it can get me in a lot of trouble. I don't listen to my mind very often. <laughs> I probably should. My mind's boring. But it, it sounds like you're constantly balancing as an artist sort of the opinions that someone's forcing on you, mm-hmm. whether it's a label or whatever, uh-huh. and then your heart, and uh-huh. then your head's trying to figure out like what the heck to go with. I, I, I would say my heart is kind of close to my intuition. So when something feels right, it just feels right. If it feels wrong, I kind of, I kind of know that too. It's like a gut feeling. So to say my, I'm not listening to my mind, just kind of, I don't even know what the, really that means exactly, but it's probably like my intuition and my heart that guide me. But honestly, if I didn't uh, love so hard. I'm not jaded by love. I've had my heart broken so many times and um, I love love every single day. Like I haven't been hurt, honestly. And kind of like my friends actually laugh about the Pamela Anderson documentary because they text me and be like, oh my God, it reminds me of you so much because I would totally get married like a billion times. Like I, <laughs> I just, just, I love love so much mm-hmm. and I love the feeling of that like initial just oh the butterflies and the it's like a high the, the kissing yeah. and all that stuff it's, it is a high it's an addiction for sure mm-hmm. yeah i can see that absolutely yeah. addicted to love, love. Yeah. addicted love to love, love maybe also. that's the name of the song it would be love. completely different song. we'll write yeah. that song we'll write that song, <laughs> <laughs> we'll write that song. <laughs> we'll write that song yeah, yeah. well that's Amazing. a beautiful way to close thank you thank you yeah. thank, thank you, you. love you love you love you thank you